You can actually take someone's DNA, take you know their their medical profile, and you can target a biological weapon that will that will kill that person. And people will very rapidly spit into a cup and send it into 23andMe and get really interesting data about their background. And guess what? Their DNA is now owned by a private company and can be sold off. More than 80% of consumers at major DNA testing companies consent to having their DNA shared for research, mainly because they believe they're helping overall research. Okay, my friends, let's take a closer look together. Welcome to Veracity. I am your host, Michael Lewis. If you've ever been curious about using a DNA service to find out about your ancestry, you might want to rethink that notion. According to recent research conducted by Representative Jason Crow, your DNA is being targeted to create biological weapons, not only against your enemies, but also against you. I know it sounds like a sci-fi movie, but this is actually happening. Our current policies are openly allowing enemy countries to conduct such tests. Senator Marco Rubio has been trying to warn everyone about this threat, and he argued, it is ridiculous that our current policies enable the Chinese Communist Party to access Americans' genomic data. There's absolutely no reason that Beijing, which routinely seeks to undermine U.S. national security, should be handed the genomic data of American citizens. Now, Representative Jason Crow also pointed out that the rising number of DNA service companies can massively contribute towards creating biological weapons against us. Because if these private companies decide to sell your DNA data to enemy countries like China or Russia, then the situation could become dangerous. For example, companies like 23andMe that will identify your background through a saliva sample already have DNA information of more than 5 million customers. Hi, and welcome to 23andMe. I'm Christine with Customer Care, and in this video, we'll be going over what's included in your kit and how to register, provide your sample, and get it on its way back to our lab. And Futura Genetics, on the other hand, is desperate to test your DNA by sending a kit to your doorstep no matter where in the world you're staying. All you have to do is order their service online, and the kit will be on its way. Although 23andMe company has previously denied selling any customer data to any laboratory, it should be remembered that these DNA service companies are private companies that are highly driven by profit. And if someone like Russia or the CCP decides to pay handsomely for the data, then it might not take much for them to say yes. Now, we mustn't forget many well-known companies like Facebook and Google have been known for selling our data behind our backs for years now. Now, while attending Aspen Security Forum in Colorado recently, Representative Jason Crow, with respects to privacy, argued that you can't have a discussion about this without talking about privacy and the protection of commercial data because expectations of privacy have degraded over the last 20 years. Young folks actually have very little expectations of privacy. That's what the polling and the data show. And while criticizing DNA service company like 23andMe, Crow said governments can actually take someone's DNA, you know, their medical profile, and you can target a biological weapon that will kill that person or take them off the battlefield or make them inoperable. Officials need to have a public discussion about the protection of DNA information, healthcare information, and related data. As much data can be procured and collected by our adversaries for the development of these systems. It can be sold off with very little intellectual property protection or privacy protection. And we don't have legal and regulatory regimes to deal with that. What China did uh, is helping the rest of the world. Now that China's uh, mostly back at work, uh, some of the critical supplies, uh, having China participate in providing those uh, could uh, make a huge difference. Now, as the CCP is eagerly looking to get their hands on America's DNA, Bill Gates, on the other hand, is making sure CCP's objective gets accomplished as quickly as possible. In June this year, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation donated $100,000 to a CCP-backed company so that they could hire the best scientists from around the world to create biological weapons. The discovery was made by National Pulse after they found on Gates Foundation's website that the donation was made to the Foreign Talent and Research Center, FTRC, of the Chinese Ministry of Science and Technology. When the National Pulse dug deeper, 
They found that the FTRC is affiliated with the CCP and is responsible for hiring the best scientists from the world to fulfill CCP's military upgradation objectives. Although the donation will also be used to conduct a forum on pandemic preparedness and response by CCP-backed host Zhang Guangkun, their suspicious nature came into the picture when in 2021, CCP's leader Xi Jinping attended a similar forum that was also hosted by Zhang Guangkun. Moreover, the objective of the forum clearly says to build a technological hub in servicing the national strategy, which directly hints towards using the donation for their military purposes. Now, it should be noted that this donation by Bill Gates is made at a time when the United States and several other countries are raising the alarm against the rising threat to the world from the CCP. FBI Director Christopher Wray said the greatest threat to the international order is the CCP which seeks to undermine the United States, its allies, and its partners. And MI5 Director General Ken McCollum also stressed the rising threat from CCP in terms of forced technological transfer, cyber attacks, and research exploitation. However, despite knowing how CCP is planning to target American citizens, the Gay Foundation, instead of helping Americans, is leaving no opportunity to support the Chinese regime. Moreover, in the last three decades, Bill Gates also managed to develop stronger relations with the top leaders of the CCP. In 2015, she met with Gates, and last year, she also wrote a letter to Gates thanking him for helping China combat coronavirus while American citizens were still suffering from the health crisis. The letter said, I deeply appreciate the act of generosity of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and your letter of solidarity to the Chinese people at such an important moment. President Xi and Gates exchanged views on public health and poverty reduction. Xi Jinping underlined the importance of international cooperation to prevent and control epidemics. He also said that China wants to continue to cooperate with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to improve public health. Elon Musk tweeted in May, Exxon is rated top 10 best in the world for environment, social, and government ESG by S&P 500, while Tesla didn't make the list. ESG is a scam. It has been weaponized by phony social justice warriors. They have the leverage to be able to use this like a financial gun to the head of any corporation that doesn't do what it wants them to do. The statement is made by a well-known author of race Marxism, James Lindsay, who has now discovered that environment, social, and governance, ESG goals, are being used as a weapon against companies to create a one world government. While speaking on the NTD show, The Nation Speaks program, Lindsay argued that the ESG scoring system was initially launched for the investors to identify whether a company is good for making an investment in the long run or not. However, after noticing China's social credit system, working perfectly to control individuals' lives, some elite groups have now found a way to create America's social credit system by exploiting corporations through ESG scores. As this initiative was launched by the United Nations, the Insider Intelligence Research Company has discovered that around $41 trillion of ESG assets have already been gathered worldwide, and by 2025, it will soon reach $50 trillion. So how does the United Nations and the elite groups want to utilize this enormous amount of money. Lindsay, while pointing towards the Chinese social credit system said, they want to implement the same control system because they see that it works to control people in China. The goal is to use corporations to create a fascist market that installs communism in the West. That's your social credit score and your environmental justice. And so they will be using that as a tool to try to get toward one world government. It's a return almost to a feudal system. The Lords get to decide what is right and what is wrong. And all new today, more dangerous and more aggressive. That is how a top U.S. military officer is describing China's military. U.S. General Mark Milley made the comments during a stop in Indonesia this morning. General Milley saying that the number of intercepts and unsafe interactions between the U.S. and other partner forces has significantly increased. As the tensions between Taiwan and China is rising each day, General Mark Milley, who is the chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, has now revealed the number of encounters with Chinese aircraft and warships in the Pacific region is increasing. While speaking to the reporters during his trip to Indonesia, Milley said, the message is the Chinese military in the air and at sea have become significantly more and noticeably more aggressive 
in their particular region. For example, in May this year, a Chinese J-6 fighter jet flew close to an Australian P-8 spy plane and intentionally released pieces of metal debris to confuse the Australian plane's radar. However, as the metal debris managed to get sucked up into the plane's engine, the Australian military revealed that the intercept resulted in a dangerous maneuver which posed a safety threat to the P-8 aircraft and its crew. By referring to recent agreement made between the CCP and the Solomon Islands that allowed the CCP to construct a naval base in the South Pacific region, Milley argued, this is an area in which China is trying to do outreach for their own purposes. And again, this is concerning because China is not doing it just for benign reasons. They are trying to expand their influence throughout the region. And that has potential consequences that are not necessarily favorable to our allies and partners in the region. Lastly, Milley added that the rising threat of the CCP in the Pacific region has now forced all the countries in the Pacific, as well as the United States, to take sufficient measures in maintaining freedom of navigation. Let me thank you all for spending time with me. And don't forget, check out this documentary right up here on transhumanism. And also, since we did mention social credit system in today's stories, check out this documentary where we go in a bit of a deeper dive into what the social credit system is and how it may affect you in the future. I'd like to thank you all. Let's meet tomorrow at the exact same time. Have a good evening, and I'll talk to you again.